Um, you look good, Santa. Sorry? <laughs> 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 yeah, so this is the way you suddenly find somebody's decided, oh, it shines beautifully off your board. You know? <laughs> <laughs> patch, he says. <laughs> um, okay, um, I'm going to do a mixture of uh, songs basically that I've been working on this year. Some of them I've been working with um, um, my quartet, which has been very exciting. Um, but you'll get the solo version. Um, there's a couple of new ones as well, and, uh, and I'm going to do a couple of covers that have a story behind them as well. Um, so the first one is uh, a song called One to Ten, and it's basically about two old friends of mine that I used to know years ago who are the authors of their own misery. <laughs> and everybody's told them what to do, and they just carry on doing the same old things, but then we all do. So it started off as a song that was sort of making fun of them, really, but actually it became more about everybody. <laughs> Making fun of the <laughs> <laughs> Well, he'd been round the block a few times and still he was never put off at the height of the hill. He'd set off and full tilt with his eyes on the mark, enjoying the thrill, the buzz and the spark, he said. You think I'd see it coming, and I'd count one to ten, before telling all my friends I'm the happiest of men, I put all my eggs in one basket and then. Pretty soon I find I'm licking my wounds again Pretty soon I find I'm licking my wounds again Well she'd learned Not to clutter or fill up her space With the kind of stuff Others leave all over the place She had no time For boxes full of papers and rags Her entire life fitted Into Samsonite bags, she said Whenever I find That I've come to depend On anybody else I just count one to ten before I break something that I can never mend Pretty soon I find I'm packing up again Pretty soon I find I've packed my bags up again gets you down, drives you right round the bend, and you're trapped in a corner that you just can't defend. Before you do or don't do what all your friends recommend, sit yourself down and go over it all again. And just accept you'll probably make all the same mistakes. Again. Um, is anybody sensitive about rude words? <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Let's hear them. This has got a rude word in it. <clears throat> but it's okay because it's not me. It's quoting somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, this is called Three Conversations, uh, and it's about three different conversations. Two of them are real, one's not. First one is about something um, that I overheard a couple of months ago um, in a hospital when I was visiting my father. I was, I was bringing him home and uh, had to wait a little while, and I sat in the cafe, and there were two nurses sitting here. And it was just one of those conversations which was totally surreal. Um, I had no idea what they were talking about, but it sounded absolutely fascinating. <laughs> and for our days afterwards, I was trying to think, what, what are they talking about? I don't know. So anyway, I'll put it in the song. Uh, the second one was also a true one, which happened on uh, a visit to a friend who lives in the Thames Estuary on the Kent coast. Um, and there's a little shop by the railway station where I went in and it was a conversation I had with the sweet old lady in there. Um, who's one of those lovely old ladies who suddenly faces you with the most appalling bigotry and expects... They just throw it at you as, as if it's normal and you're going to say yes. Um, and you just left not really not knowing what to do. Um, and the third one was a dream. Still don't quite know what to make of the conversation I heard today. Two nurses sharing a cake in the hospital cafe. And one used a knife. Illustrate the way Leaning in to be discreet She said Shouldn't be allowed And her friend nodded and agreed And said I don't think it is now <laughs> Sweet old lady serving in the shop Beside the railway line Where I often used to stop To buy myself some wine She said, let's change round here This town doesn't feel like mine And then there's all these fucking queers <laughs> And you can't tell half the time <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a bag with that, dear? <laughs> it's five pounds ninety-nine <laughs> stage one day my eyes picked out the face of the very one the songs were written about he said they advertised your name real reason I came was to say I still feel just the same and I said I do too and then he introduced his wife and walked away and I came home
Um, lots of great things have happened to me this year musically, and one of them has been getting to know and working with Nick Jones. I don't know if anybody knows Nick Jones, the old folk singer from the 70s, who disappeared without trace for 30 years um, after an accident and has resurfaced, and I got to know his daughter a little bit. Down here because I'm getting dizzy. <coughs> Um, <coughs> is it because of the lights? Oh, it's just because it's so hot. It's oh, so hot. I, I turn this off. my heart and it means that um, <laughs> it's really hot. Then of course, I, I forgot that was on. That might detract slightly from your performance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to open the door a little bit? Just to crack the door and just let it... Yeah. Okay, that's a um, So anyway, working with... Nick Jones has been sort of, it's the sort of thing that over the last 30 years, when I was 19, I think, I saw Nick perform and it completely changed the way I played the guitar and uh, my whole idea about how you should play the guitar, really, although I don't play him like him, like him now. Um, huge influence and a big hero and uh, <clears throat> I had that weird experience last week, well, also for the Ox Jam event, of actually standing on stage with Nick singing and playing for him. He can't play anymore. But he can still sing a bit, and uh, it's sort of one of those surreal things. And anyway, this is a song that he wrote uh, many years ago, and he never actually recorded it. Um, it was released, finally, on a... somebody had a, a recording on an old reel-to-reel -reel that they'd made at a club in about 1980. Um, and it was remastered and put out, but um, it's a lovely song. <coughs> and it makes my songs look cheerful. <laughs> the ruins by the shore. Somewhere between ice ages they first appeared and fell hungry on the beasts and the fish they speared all their bones are blackened and their faces are no more as we walk among the ruins by the shore. They believed in gods and thought they'd never die. But now spiders nest the tombs wherein they lie. And all their bones are blackened and their faces are no more As they walk among the ruins by the shore They built golden cities rising in the air But greed drew their foolish hearts into its snare all their bones are blackened And their faces are no more As they walk among the ruins by the shore Kings, tyrants and their empires Held the world in sway But their blind belief in science Took their souls away all their bones are blackened, their faces are no more, as we walk among the ruins by the shore. And we watch the heavens and the silent sky, hoping that light will fall on blinded eyes. All our bones will blacken, our faces be no more When we lie among the ruins by the shore When we lie among the ruins by the shore
few years ago I went on holiday with a friend. Um, we were touring around Spain and we stayed in several um, of these places. I don't know if anybody's come across them. They're called the Balnearios Municipales and they're government run health spas. Um, and they're extraordinary places. Um, usually attached to a sort of grade three stately building or something like that where they've made a hotel and then there's the spa is next door. And the hotel's okay, it's quite nice, nothing special. Um, although the buildings are usually lovely. And the health spas are unbelievable. They're just like prison camps. <laughs> <laughs> They're just full of people in starchy white uniforms who just shout at you. And just tell you to sort of get out of the sauna and get into the parafangos. What's parafangos? Just get in there. Your turn. It's on the it's on the rotor. No, no, I don't do that. What it is? <laughs> Get in there. Well, what it is basically is water torture. Basically, they put you in this long corridor with, in all white tile, and then turn a fire hose on you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's supposed to be good for you. It's absolutely foul. It's, it's the sort of thing that you know, is forbidden by the Geneva Convention, I'm sure. <laughs> and you pay for the pleasure. Anyway, uh, while we were there, we were sitting in a restaurant and um, we got fascinated by these two very elegant old ladies that were sort of at a table or two down from us, um, who were, they looked extremely grand, very different from each other, um, but uh, it was clear from watching them that they were absolutely inseparable lifetime companions, they'd been to, you know, they knew everything. Um, and it was also equally clear that they couldn't stand the sight of each other. <laughs> um, just locked in this sort of hate, <laughs> um, which both of them seemed quite comfortable with. So that's where this song came from. It's called Comfortable Hatred. <laughs> um, we, gave, we gave them names and made up characters for them. So none of this is really true. It's all this what we invented. Um, we called them Gracia and Margarita. That doesn't work in English, so it's Grace and Margaret in the song. For nearly forty years now, these two old friends first followed, and then set, and then ignored the latest trend. One bears a grudge and thinks the other one should make amends. Comfortable hatred that neither wants to end. Comfortable hatred that neither wants to end. Margaret eats so fast, she can't remember what she ate. <laughs> While Grace just looks and prods at the food on her plate. With a sneer of disdain, she looks around this place. Comfortable hatred has left a scar on her face. Comfortable hatred has left a scar on her face. Tall and elegant, Grace looks down on dumpy little Margaret, all made up like a clown. Looking quite ridiculous in that sparkly evening gown. She wears her displeasure in the flicker of a frown, revealing her feelings in the flicker of a frown.
Grace makes no attempt to hide what she thinks. As men a fraction of their age keep buying moderate drinks. She's giggling like a girl as the champagne glasses clink. Margaret makes new friends And Grace just blinks Margaret makes new friends While Grace just blinks Crosses Margaret's mind to rise to the constant provocation of Grace's tuts and sighs. There's steel in her heart, oh, but only kindness in her eyes. Comfortable hatreds, just part of marriage, she decides. Comfortable hatreds. Part of every marriage she decides. Last ones on the terrace at 2 a.m. Both trying to keep straight faces. As the manager complains And then three pairs of eyebrows raised As Grace lets one off again Margaret holds her aching sides And Grace just tries to hide The smile that's spreading behind her fan While Margaret holds out her hand Grace takes it, and these two old friends help each other to stand. Um, a song written by Sorry. somebody, I've forgotten their name actually, but it's a true story, um, and I first heard this years and years ago and forgotten. I think there was a time probably when it was. Um, being done to death in all the folk clubs, and then everyone's forgotten it. Well, I've taken it on myself to reintroduce it. But it's a classic story song, and I know you've probably noticed this. I've, just this year, really, I've really started working more on story songs. I'm too old to do slushy songs. And I'm fed up as well with songs about me. <laughs> sort of every time I start writing something with an I in it, you throw that out, turn it into a he. Or she, and make it a story, and it's, it's easier to sing. Okay, we'll try this. It's called The King of Rome. In the west end of Derby lived a working man. And he said, I can't fly, but my pigeons can. And when I set them free, Just like part of me Gets lifted up on shining wings Well Charlie Hudson's pigeon loft was down the yard Of a rented house in Brook Street Where life was hard Oh but Charlie had a dream In 1913, Charlie bred a pigeon that would make his dreams come true. There 
There's going to be a race from Italy. So we got out all the maps. Oh, look at all that land and see, oh, Charlie, you're going to lose that bird. But Charlie never heard. He packed it in a basket and he sent it off to Rome. day of the race, the storm blew in. A thousand birds were blown away, never seen again. Charlie, we told you so. We thought by now you'd know that when you're living in the West End, well, there ain't many dreams. A man can crawl around, or he can learn to fly. And when you live round here, the ground seems awfully near. And sometimes I need a lift from victory. off to the pub with a mate or two when I saw a wing flash up in the blue oh Charlie it's the king of Rome he's come back to his west end home oh, come outside Charlie he's perched up on your roof Get home to me. Come on down, my lovely one. You made my dreams come true. In the West End of Derby lived a working man. And he said, I can't fly, but my pigeons can, and when I set them free. Just like part of me gets lifted up on shining wings. Does anybody need to replenish while well, I'm just going to do a couple more and then we'll have a break? Is that alright? Yeah? Nick Jones is one of my heroes, uh, musically, <coughs> probably the other biggest hero is Joni Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any fans? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Super. Well, like Nick, um, I heard her would probably when I was about 17 for the first time, and it changed everything. I just never sort of thought about songwriting the same way. So although it don't sound like her, uh, it's one of those, you know, what would Joni do? <laughs> the questions you can ask when you're stuck with a song. Um, and the answer is usually something better than that. But... <laughs> um, anyway, this was for, um, after seeing a, an interview with her on YouTube. Uh, it was only done a couple of years ago, just after her 70th birthday. Um, 
and uh, it was quite a shock to see her <coughs> because um, all her career really, she's always sort of looked the same. She's sort of always had the same hair, she's just got this very distinctive face and high cheekbones and a big toothy grin. And suddenly she looked older um, and it was just a shock. As soon as you got used to it, it was actually she looks just the same. And there's certainly no impairment. She's as feisty and as difficult and as cantankerous and as rude and, uh, as she always has been. And mixes what she says, you know, sometimes it's so insightful and, and spot on and sometimes it's so flaky um, that she, so, but she doesn't care, she just, she's Joni Mitchell, she can say what she likes. Um, but after seeing that interview, I, I immediately wrote this about the interview. So this is called The Old Lady.
but I do need some help. Santa. <laughs> certain things that I dread every year. It's not Santa. I like Santa. You good at Santa? Santa just needs to have a sort of nice... A little bit faster. That's it. There's the reindeer coming. <laughs> It just goes all the way through. <clears throat> um, so, well, I can tell you, well, the title of the song tells you one of the things I can't stand. This song is called I Can't Stand, S I can't stand the Slade. <laughs> <laughs> Take another glass. 